Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Devs Episode 7, so full spoilers for the episode as always, and we're coming off, of course, Episode 6, which was kind of a murky episode for us, we were very disappointed, we, we kind of spent most of that discussion talking about why it wasn't working for us, and why it was kind of almost just blowing up the issues that the show already had into a degree where it was kind of unavoidable to get in the way now of the, the enjoyment. So, interesting going to this one where a lot of big stuff happens. Uh, it, it definitely, well, I say a lot. It's like two big things happen because uh, the show likes to spend a lot of time on the one or two on, things it does. On the pacing of this show, that's a lot of things. Yes. Uh, but, uh, th so, one side of this is that Katie and Forrest know what this day is. They even say as much as they're getting ready to go out and like, well, we've, we've watched this day repeatedly. We know exactly what this day is going to be in and out because we've obsessed over it for months. And to the point where he just kind of casually reminds her, oh, by the way, remember Lyndon's in your car. And she's you like, you got to deal with that. Oh, yeah, that thing. That's right. Um, and that thing ends up being pretty dramatic because he ends up dying. <laughs> like, Lyndon. It's one of the best scenes in the episode, I think. That, that, that whole conversation with them at the top of the dam. Yeah, about how he's going to stand over the ledge and kind of prove the, the multiverse theory, the idea that he will live because if he lives, then he's in one of the universes where he didn't fall. And then if he doesn't fall, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, basically, I think the, the gist of it was that there are an equal amount of worlds in which he lives and which he dies. And there are a lot of these where he's going to die. And this might be one of them. But the, the only way to find out is to is to stand up there. And he's convinced that even if he dies in this one, there are other ones where he lives on. Yeah. No, but we don't see any where he lives. We see multiple versions of him falling, multiple versions of Katie walking away after the fact. We don't see any versions where he doesn't die. Because I, I, I thought, because the camera sort of starts off low and we see kind of the body flying past, and I thought, as we go up, we keep seeing more and more versions of him falling through the camera, through the frame. I thought we were going to get to the top and we'd get to the one that doesn't fall. And it plays that for like half a second where you see yeah. him standing there just long enough where you think maybe this is it, and then... The, the final version drops. Which really makes me think, because if Katie's watched this, she knows that he was going to die, right? And she, she makes a point of not telling him, because he says, you, you mean, you've watched this, but you're not going to tell me, right? And she's like, no, I'm not going to tell you. And I'm like, well, you knew then in that case. And like, so, so much tragedies came from it's, them following what happened in the it's predictions. Interesting. Is this some form of manslaughter? Like, second degree, maybe? In the sense that... He only stands out there and goes on the ledge because she tells him that he will. Yeah, but presumably and she knows that he's going to fall the entire time. Yeah, but she's only telling him that he will because she saw herself tell him that she will. Right, that he will, and the I know. projection complicated. I know, but the only reason he stands out there is because she says you're going to stand out there, and he even questions it. It's like you know, would would I have ever done this? If oh you yeah, told uh, me? Goes, yeah but, but I did. His reaction is like, what? Why would I do that? No, I'm not going to do it. You know, he's, he's, it's not like he's gone ho about the idea as soon as she brings it up. It takes a bit of convincing, a bit of, like, here, this is why it's going to prove this, and this is why you'll, it'll lead to you getting your job back if you don't fall down. Uh, so, big scene there, and then her and Forrest just kind of, like, watching, uh, you know, because the episode kind of starts with this weird kind of, like, interlude of these cave paintings, these, these like, you know, people in caves thousands of years ago. And mm. we we get them watching this, and he talks about how civilization was kind of the same for thousands of years. Like, humanity did not really evolve that much. It, you know, it was a much slower... Pro and it's something we talk about a lot, uh, where humanity evolves... In, ter in terms of, you know, our technology, in terms of how our, so our society works, things do move much faster now. As he points out, sometimes, you know, the world changes month to month, sometimes hours to hours, depending on what's going on. Hell, right now it feels like that, uh, with everything yeah, going on in the world. Yeah, I mean, there are... There are obviously big events in the in, in recent history that you can look at and go, in the space of hours, the entire world was different. Yeah, um, but of course that's something that's slowly ramped up over you know millennia. It's something that slowly yeah. you know that people people were you know it was a long time before farming was was kind of you know I don't want to say invented. I don't know if that's the right word, but farming was uh, developed, and then it was a long time before we had you know electricity, and then. 
but then it wasn't that long after electricity comparatively speaking that till we had phones and tv and things like that and it wasn't that long after those things where we had the internet really in the grand scheme yeah, of things there's, there's kind of an exponential growth yeah uh so yeah that's one of the things that you always i always think about is like just how much the world's actually changed in the last 150 years versus the entire history before that <laughs> like... it's, it is incredible just over <laughs> the course of our own personal lifetimes yes basically the entirety of the internet mobile phones you know, none of these things existed. Yes. Or, but, but, like, you know, maybe barely in their infancy, but not really. Not not in any sort of consistent way. If you go no, back... No, no, you know, in a, not in a massious way, certainly. Right. If you go back 150 years and go over that same, you know, 25 to 30 year period of, a, you know, a young life, there's not that much of a technological advancement. Nah, nah. There'll be specific things here or there. Like the steam engine, yeah. for example, be a big one. There'll, there'll be a clear sort of turning point around that. Yeah, there's a before and after. Yeah, but yeah, it's just not as c- constant. Uh, and he, you know, he kind of talks about that, and he's he's kind of wowed by that. Uh, and they they, you know, they 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 cheaped out here because they say they're going to watch dinosaurs, and then don't show us them watching dinosaurs. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you, you know your budget, yeah. you bastards. Uh, but to be uh, fair, better than showing us shitty looking dinosaurs. <laughs> Uh, very possibly, but I, I did appreciate the joke uh, that it wasn't as good as Jurassic Park. That was an amusing little gag. Uh, yeah. Because that's kind of one of the big things that happens as well from that side of things is uh, Stuart and the others who weren't there watching what appears to be the first sort of span of time that Earth existed. You know, that they're, they're watching Earth at its earliest conception and, yeah. you know, th- 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 like, how, how they're wowed by this. And then Stuart really freaks them out by going, like, one second into the future to show them. Because they say, well, we're not in there. You know, the, the history of the world's in there, but we're not in there. And he shows them themselves in that room, which I, I predict he's going to do, but he did it, like, one second in the future. So when they go up and start looking and waving their hand, it's actually a little bit ahead on the... Uh... I, I think one, one second was an annoyingly frustrating amount for me where it's just long enough that they can see and process what happened and then do it. Whereas, or, you know, and say the line or whatever. Whereas if you do like half a second, they'll already be starting to say it as, as they do it. Um, and the, the moment that sold it, I think for me, was the guy who kept waving his arm off on the, the right-hand side. Towards the end, he actually turns his back and you can just see it carrying on behind him. I thought that was, it, it felt more impressive that way. Mm. Uh I mean, I had no problems with the timing. And, and it, no, it goes back to that whole you know conversation from episodes ago: is are they only doing it because they see that they're doing it? And it's like, okay, the idea is in their head because they've seen it, so they do the exact thing that they've just seen. Yeah. Well, Where, I mean, the point is though is that it's kind of trippy, and it's it's kind of Stuart's whole thing. This episode is that he's become kind of terrified. Uh, I mean, he kind of sums it up in the phrase "uh oh," as like we've kind of opened Pandora's box here in a way that we can't quite. Because yeah, it, was, it was making me think of, uh, bizarrely, it made me think in a weird way of uh, Cube 2, Hypercube. And this is a weird thing Can't to think about. I've seen it, but okay. But it's, it's, it gets really trippy in that movie where, like, you know, like, they start running to alternate versions themselves and there's, like, you know, infinite versions and everything's just kind of overlapping and looping. And you're in this sea of var- var- variables and, like, you're just one thing in a sea of versions of yourself and how daunting that is and uh, how, like, sort of almost incomprehensible as to the point where you just drive yourself mad thinking about it uh so it's almost you know that's why it's healthy just not to know these things and just go about life this is why it's crazy to know and why when lolly shows up at the end he's like you shouldn't go in there <laughs> it's like bad th- yeah. bad things away uh so lolly's L- side of things though is that her and jamie have kind of a a hard well it's not hard to heart it's not the required phrase but they, they kind of bond in the morning uh waking up together and kind of have a sort of you know uh, this is supposed to be the sweet moment of uh like them pretending to be normal and just making sort of small talk and going about their day and it spends a lot of time uh on just the little things as he's as they're getting up especially him making coffee uh getting her some water um yeah that that was a weird thing for me like when he's when he makes the water he slices up a lemon and puts like you know a lemon garnish on the edge and mm-hmm I have never, ever, ever known anyone to do that in their own home. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the point, right? He wants it to be a bit more impressive. He wants to make it more Maybe. of a presentation. He's, he's giving Maybe. her something nice. He's using her lemons, though. It's not that nice. 
I think you're missing the point of this scene. Like, if you want to critique that, that this isn't working for you, that's fine. But this is one of your Connor complaints. No, is, it, is, it is. It is. It just, it was one of those pointless. things that just out to me as... The, the, as, whole, the whole point of this moment is to show that he goes above and beyond just to make you like him a little bit more right before he dies that is that is the point of this action i get it but that that one moment there of, of the lemon slice that that felt like a it was too tv too movie where it's like no nah, you've lost me you went too far with trying to do what you're doing this is such a simple little thing i totally buy someone's done this just because you've never seen someone do it doesn't mean it doesn't happen all right this is one of your things. It's just because you have not it seen it. You can't accept it. It's, it's a normal thing that people do. Um, it's the sort of thing that maybe people don't, for the most part, do it. But it's such a simple little thing that's possible. So, of course, what, of course they can do it. Why wouldn't they? Anyway, uh, Kenton breaks in, kills him right there. It, it, it does the shock death thing where as soon as he opens the door, Jamie's standing there. He's on his way back to the bedroom with the, the drinks. And he shoots him dead. And... Ketan comes in, tries to fight Lily. Lily tries to fight back, hits him in the head, but yeah, ultimately... Yeah, she's done a thing where she's put the, the FU sign in the window to make it look like she's gone out of it. But she's obviously not unsuccessful for the most part. He's he's winning, he's about to kill her, he's strangling her. And it's just at this moment, the homeless guy uh, strangles him assassin style with a, with a cord. Uh, really brutal. And then very, you know, he speaks a little bit of Russian. It's like, okay... Here we yeah, go. he's counting in Russian as he's choking him. Yeah. Uh, so he sits down with Lily and explains, kind of, well, he, she kind of guesses it's roughly who he is. And he's like, okay, yes, I was hired to watch uh, Sergei and make sure he was okay. And then I was hired and I was told to stay here to watch you and not necessarily protect you, but I made the choice to protect you because I, you know, I like you well enough that I, I feel like I need to. And I'm going to disappear now because there's been a murder. There's two bodies in your apartment. But you, uh, you know, it'll be look, it'll look bad for you. You won't be able to explain this. So you've got two options. One, go to the CIA and they will, they, they're the only agency that will understand about the espionage angle here. And they'll question you for, probably for years before they finally let you go. But unlike the police and the FBI, they'll actually treat it like, okay, we kind of at least can put the pieces together and understand what she's trying to tell us. Or you just run to Hong Kong, live with your mother, and you'll never, never be able to come home. Um, and she's all distraught. And the, the, the point of this, I mean, that's not the right phrase, the point, but ultimately this leads her to pick up the gun, Kenton's gun with the silencer on it that's left uh, lying on the floor in her in her room. Because she goes for her passport. She's, she's made that choice seemingly. But she then gets the idea that she wants to go to Debs, even though earlier on in the episode, when she, before the murder of Jamie, the whole plan was, well, I'm supposed to go to Debs, I'm just not going to go. We'll just hang out. And honestly, my favourite line from any of their scenes this episode is when he's like, well, I was going to help you, you know, whatever you want to do. I mean, I had my head, my head, I was all geared up for like a high-speed police chase, maybe 20 years in prison, but watch Home and Stay TV, sure, yeah, we could do <laughs> if that's, that's going to that, work. Now that sums up right now. We, we could do that. Uh, so she gets the gun and she makes her way to Devs. And Which, I, I'm going to say here, I don't quite buy the choice of going to Devs here. I, I don't like. I get that she's faced with this horrific choice, you know, of okay, CIA or or, or Hong Kong, and you know, this has all just happened. I don't see personally. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's just me that like why there she goes. Ah, screw it. I'm just going to go to Devs after all. Well, it's not about going to Dev. She's not going to Dev because she wants to see what happens at Dev. She's going for revenge. Because everything that's happened with Devs has now led to two people she cared about being killed. Yeah, but I feel like it, it kind of really mucks up, you know, the, the stuff in the last episode where they, they came to kind of an understanding between the, the two sides and that Kenton was kind of a wild card now. It, it felt weird to me for her to just kind of get back on, ah, well, well let's go after them. Yeah, I'm not saying it makes complete logistical sense, but it doesn't change the fact that if if Forrest had never had Sergei killed, they would never have investigated it, and Ken sure, would never want to murder a, her or murder Jamie. There is uh, absolutely Jamie. a chain of events that leads back to it. I just I feel like for me it kind of dramatically underplays the whole point of what the last episode was. So it kind of makes me like that episode less, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I'm not really trying to defend it. Even I just don't necessarily agree with your complaints. <laughs> if, that, <laughs> if that makes sense, I, I, I felt oddly underwhelmed by a lot of this episode. Uh, 
And I think yeah. part of that is just where I feel about the show in general at this point. Because there's a lot of really great moments that, that come back again to the style. There's a lot of moments where some music will be playing and it'll be the ethereal sort of nature. You know, even as Lily's walking to Debs at the end and we see the, the big, you know, child statue and in, in, in the moonlight and walking through the trees and the music playing, um, the trippy stuff of them watching themselves one second in the future or... Or even yeah, even even Forrest, you know, giving his speech about humanity and watching these cave paintings, and he talks about this young girl that he found there who died in her early thirties, and she had a dog, and she had five kids, and but you know, and you know, dying in her early thirties was probably pretty common in this at these times uh, yeah. due to various factors. But like that's all that stuff. I really all all the all the the uh, the aesthetic stuff. I still really like. But, yeah, me too. But when it came back to Lily and Jamie, and J- Jamie's death is a really frustrating one, actually, because I have really mixed feelings over it. And on the one hand, I- I've typically liked him as a, as a character. He's likable, right? He's a likable dude. Yeah. Um, and there's some interesting dynamics at play here where, you know, when Forrest met him last episode, okay, he doesn't really know him, but he knows that Lily ends up making the choice to go to Devs, which would make me think that he knows that whoever she's with is going to die t- tomorrow. So it makes me question the idea that you know, when he meets Jamie in the last episode, like he's like, "Oh, this is the guy that's going to die tomorrow." So all the conversations he has with Jamie in the last episode maybe has has a bit more of a subtext to them now uh, than mm-hmm. they did before. That's kind of interesting. Uh, like, I mean, I don't know if I want to go back and watch the last episode to see if it makes me feel uh, differently about them, but it is at least an interesting idea. But at the same time, like, I, I did also kind of feel like, "Oh, is that just is that just Jamie's story done?" Oh, okay, I guess, I guess that's that. Yeah, you know, there, was, there was, and even even yeah, Kent needs motivation, I guess. Even Kent, and more so even than Jamie, I just kind of feel like, oh, that's Kent's thing done. They, you know, we set him up as being this antagonist now, and that's just a, that's him done now, gone. Yeah, yeah, we, we were talking about the end of the last episode how he's kind of the, the the villain right now, and he's dealt with in the first, I don't know, fifteen twenty minutes of this episode. I mean, I may have been learning that, I don't know. My concept, my, my concept of time, the, the point is not when the episode takes place, the point is how quick it is from when he starts to appear from, until he dies. Yeah. It's yeah. the screen he, time he total. He has, like, what? Five minutes on screen, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Um, but it's never something, because they set him up as being someone who's also against Forrest and that now, he's suspicious of everyone, and there's never going to be a conflict now where we see him, like, try to kill Forrest or try to, conf- you know, try to confront Forrest because... It's just never going to happen. He's already dead. The, the, that that part of it's just gone. Uh, the whole the whole thing had this weird mixed feeling of to me of like, okay, I kind of care about Jamie, so I, the death kind of works as a shock death, but at the same time, I'm kind of left going, oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it feels like it was just tying up loose ends because they were like, well, we got to do something with this rather than actually knowing what to do with the end of these characters' arcs. That makes sense, especially with like Ken and like you're saying, you know, there's these things that he could have been playing with, with, with Forrest. And the last thing that they really had together was him saying, uh, you know, hey, you know, if, if the police give up, I, I ain't going down for this. You know, it's not happening. And then there's nothing to follow up on that. I guess they kind of just didn't really know what to do. And they went, oh, we'll just close him off here and, and problem solved. I don't know if I agree with that, mainly just because. I feel like these last couple of scenes we've had of Kenton before this episode setting up that he's now the villain of the show, like, you could have just not had those and, like, you know, his stuff was done once he'd done the, the initial murder and the initial investigation that he was involved in. Like, he could have just faded to the background. It, it, it wasn't a character that we needed to continue with. I, I, I feel like this is less not knowing what to do and just not liking the decisions they made. Like, I, I don't necessarily think this is because they didn't know what to do with Jamie or Ken and get into the ending. It's more that I just don't like the decisions that they actually wanted to. I, this was always the plan. I don't think this was Garland or whoever not knowing what to do with them at the end. I, I, don't... I think Jamie falls less into that. I think Kenton, for me, does more in the sense it, it goes further back as to they they obviously didn't want to let him fade into obscurity in the, you know after the, the stuff with Jamie earlier on because they obviously still felt that no, he's been too big a part of this. We need to do something with this character. We can't just leave him. And that's the point where I feel like, they, okay, they didn't know what to do with him from then. And that's why we went down that route at all. And got, you know, so it's all of this half of that plot, not just this particular episode. I actually do kind of like the ending in that I, I like the idea of her walking into Devs finally, the door shutting and cutting to black. 
Like, I like that being the ending out of the final episode. I think from a, a creative choice, I appreciate that as a... I guess it's a directorial choice. It was just deciding with that's the moment you want to end on. Uh, I, f- I feel like that's, that's the weird feeling with this show now, especially now we're here at the end, or get going into the ending, is that I feel like I like all the choices that Garland has made as a director. Like, I, I, I like the way he's choosing to do certain things. I like the way he's choosing to build certain things or film certain scenes. As I seen at the start of this episode where Katie's like in Forest Home still and she sees like multiple versions of his daughter running around and he's his old you know, his ex wife or ex that's not the right word. He's he's uh his deceased wife, I suppose is the better term. Uh is, you know, lying in the bed. Like, like this idea she's seeing multiple timelines that she's watched before sort of play out in front of her. There's lots of directorial moments that I really like. Uh it's it's actually the core character journey that I have all the problems with and I think that's interesting, given that Garland was a, a writer first, you know, but you know, long before he was a director. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's just a case of, like, you know, he's better suited to writing a two-hour movie as opposed to an eight-hour series. And, yeah, uh, might well be. And, uh, you know, maybe instead instead of actually having eight hours worth of content, he took what would be a two-hour script and padded it <laughs> to the point. And don't get me wrong, I think a lot of her complaints, like, or with Lily specifically, if Lily was better written and perhaps had a better actress. Now, admittedly, I'm not ready to blame her entirely because I, I do feel like the character herself is pretty flat and that's not all on her. But I agree. Her- I think there's a lot of just blandness in the character and and maybe, maybe an actress with, with more charisma could have just kind of made you like her enough on just that that ground but i I mean that that's not really fair to her when it is yeah the the script for her character has not been particularly you know compelling yeah it it just it kind of feels like uh she's sleepwalking through the part or or the the character sleepwalking through the story is maybe a better way of putting it yeah uh so that's kind of rough it's interesting because like this bit here at the end is it's it's some genuine like agency from her and it's weird because I'm saying that and I'm thinking, oh, she's actually making a choice. But then she's been kind of doing that throughout. Like, you know, the 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 first episode or so or whatever, there's, there's a lot of things happening around her. But from the time she chooses to to hack into the phone, she goes to Jane. There has been a lot of agency from her character in trying to propel things forward. I think, Joe, you know the biggest problem with her plot is actually is that the actual investigation and trying to figure out what's going on when you look back at it now, it's actually kind of a dull sequence of events, really, when you think about it. All all it's really all it really was was ex boyfriend getting convinced to hack into a phone and then, you know, like obviously the one big exciting thing early on was sneaking into the or going out into the balcony so the friend could go into the, the computer. Uh, yeah. that that was a bit exciting, sure. But like after that, like everything was looking at some footage, realizing that this is shady, deciding what to do, and then that that's when everyone came in and like sent her off to like a hospital. But from there, like we kind of like quickly resolved that uh, without much there effort. Was, um, meeting the spy, which was solid, but kind of feels inconsequential now. Because like like don't get me wrong. Okay, we we kind of got that he was a spy without that meeting anyway. That had kind of already been confirmed uh, by Jamie. So you could have still had even. Even this stuff with the the homeless guy in this episode still would have worked without the the meeting with the other spy. Yeah, I mean the homeless guy could have worked as the first time she actually spoke to someone who outright said out loud, "Don't oh, know, Sergey was a Russian spy, and I'm also a Russian spy." Like it, in retrospect, it's kind of weird. Even though I loved how that scene looked, I loved the the mist of the like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like that this scene would have worked as that. Like where you know, and maybe it would have been more effective if you know, would went all season with her still having that doubt. And then this moment would be like, no, no, he was a spy. I was here to sort of watch his back. And yeah, because because when he starts counting in Russian in this episode, you're like, ah, oh, he's with them. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if you could have had that moment of, oh shit, he's the one that's been there the whole time. Now, I wonder if you have that moment. Oh, there really is Russian spies. Like you know, like maybe it would have been something yeah. where all all season we'd have been like, oh, we don't we don't really know for sure. Like, is there really spy stuff going on? Is this just Forrest and that being, like paranoid or excessive or yeah we could have yeah that could have been played with perhaps you'd have to change a few of those earlier sequences don't get me wrong like you wouldn't have been able to see sergey's spy watch for example you would have just had to have it played on of course the knowledge of forest having seen the future 
um, which I think you could still play with in this show perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Most likely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a frustrating... I mean, obviously it was better than last week's episode. No question, right? It was better yeah, than episode yeah. six. Uh, but I, I think, you know, the, the problems of the show have compounded a little bit. And I think last week's episode is definitely put a, a dampener on the on my overall enjoyment even if this episode was better yeah it was kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back right where mm. yes this episode is better but it's it's kind of too late the the you've seen the problems now and there's no going back from that i really hope the fin- finale blows my mind a little bit i'm hoping that the, you know whatever happens in devs whatever she does it's just cool enough and interesting enough on its own right and it may justify what we were saying last week about how if this was a two-hour movie, it may actually work. Because what happens might reshape the rest of the narrative, which if it was two hours, it would actually work because it'd be one sitting, and you'd get to the end and get this your mind blown. But because it's been eight weeks, well, it's, not, it's, been, it's more like seven weeks because the first two were together, but you know, it's been seven weeks of like little bits of the story. And okay, the ending might be really cool, but like... It, it's the sort of thing where even if this ending does you know blow your mind and, and recontextualizes the whole thing, I'm not going to have the, the the will to go back and watch all of this again. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Whereas no. if it was a two-hour movie, yeah, you know, it's a lot more likely. Yeah, but we said as well last week, it would also stop a lot of these problems from being as bad as they are, if not outright take them away, because you wouldn't have time to uh, ha- yeah. suffer th- from them. So... Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we will obviously be covering the finale next week. We'll see how it ends. No point in giving up now. Uh, but you can, of course, let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show, you can do that over in patreon.com slash TV, And you can do that for as little as $1 per month and keep all the content coming and support us. Uh, but otherwise, that is it. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Make sure you check out Westworld Reviews because that's the other big sci-fi show on right now that we're doing. Uh, but yeah keep watching TV guys have you got any vanilla